Let's start with an equation that looks simple at first glance. x raised to the power of x equals negative 1. But here's the twist. This equation is more powerful than it seems. Today, we'll explore two different ways to solve it. First, using the traditional method with complex numbers, and second, using a brand new approach called the virtual number system. By the end of this video, you'll see which system gives a more elegant and natural solution. Let's dive in. Let's begin with the complex number system. The first step is to take the natural logarithm of both sides of the equation. That gives us the natural logarithm of x to the power of x equals the natural logarithm of negative 1. Using the logarithm power rule, we bring down the exponent, rewriting the equation as x times the natural logarithm of x equals the natural logarithm of negative 1. Now, in the complex system, the natural logarithm of negative 1 is not just a single number. It's actually equal to i times pi plus 2 times i times pi times k, where k is any whole number. Substituting this into our equation, we get x times the natural logarithm of x equals i times pi plus 2 times i times pi times k. To solve for x, we rewrite the equation in a form that matches something called the Lambert W function. That gives us natural logarithm of x times e raised to the natural logarithm of x equals i times pi plus 2 times i times pi times k. Now we can apply the Lambert W function, which tells us that natural logarithm of x is equal to w of i times pi plus 2 times i times pi times k. Finally, solving for x, we exponentiate both sides, giving us x equals e raised to the power of w of i of i times pi plus 2 times i times pi times k. This is the general solution in the complex system. And the key takeaway, because of that extra term with k, this equation actually has infinitely many solutions, one for each whole number value of k. Now let's try solving the same equation x to the power of x equals negative 1, but this time using the virtual number system. Again, we start by taking the natural logarithm of both sides, which gives us natural logarithm of x to the power of x equals natural logarithm of negative 1. Applying the logarithm power rule, we rewrite it as x times the natural logarithm of x equals the natural logarithm of negative 1. But here's the key difference. In the virtual number system, the natural logarithm of negative 1 is not an infinite set of values. Instead, it has a single well-defined value, which we call j. So now our equation simplifies to x times the natural logarithm of x equals j. To solve for x, we rewrite the equation in terms of exponentials, giving us x, x equals e raised to the power of j divided by x. But here's something interesting. This creates a recursive structure. If we substitute x back into itself, we get x equals e raised to the power of j divided by e raised to the power of j divided by x. And continuing this process, x becomes an infinite recursive exponential, e raised to the power of j over e raised to the power of j over e raised to the power of j, and so on. This type of recursion gives us a single, well-defined solution, something the complex system couldn't provide. But can we express it in a cleaner, closed form? Let's find out. We go back to our equation, x times the natural logarithm of x equals j. To isolate the logarithm, we divide both sides by x, giving us natural logarithm of x equals j divided by x. Now multiplying both sides by e raised to the power of the natural logarithm of x, we get natural logarithm of x times e raised to the power of the natural logarithm of x equals j. This looks very familiar. It matches the form of the Lambert W function, where w times e to the power of w equals j. So applying the Lambert W function, we get w equals w of j. And since w was just the natural logarithm of x, that means natural logarithm of x equals w of j. Finally, solving for x, we exponentiate both sides, giving us x equals e raised to the power of w of j. This is our closed form solution in the virtual number system. Unlike the complex system, this method gives us just one unique answer. Now, let's compare our results. In the complex system, the solution is x equals e raised to the power of w of i times pi plus 2 times i times pi times k, which gives us infinitely many solutions. That's because the complex logarithm has multiple branches. But in the virtual number system, the solution is simply x equals e raised to the power of w of j, just one single well-defined answer. The key difference is clear. The complex system gives multiple solutions, while the virtual system provides just one. The complex system also relies on imaginary numbers, introducing additional complexity. 
but the virtual system eliminates the need for imaginary units and multiple branches, offering a more natural and elegant approach. To summarize, the complex system provides infinitely many solutions due to the nature of the complex logarithm, while the virtual number system gives a single unique answer. By removing unnecessary complexities, the virtual number system offers a clearer and more intuitive way to handle equations like x to the power of x equals negative 1. So, which method do you think is more elegant? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into mathematical systems, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this.